One day, on a snowy day, the owner of the orphanage came out to see what kind of box was on the porch. Assuming that it was fruit, even though he remembered well that he hadn't ordered anything the day before. When the man opened the box, he saw a newborn baby inside, sleeping peacefully, wrapped tightly in a red blanket. This was the hero of the future story who was immediately, after birth, thrown to an orphanage in the cold winter and where he was named Lee Tang. Once, in the present, when he got into trouble and faced a very dark future, he actually gave up because he saw no light in his life and could not even defend himself because he was a kind of Omega man. Suddenly, the boy could smell the Alpha Man approaching him and standing up for him, despite the threats from the villain. The Alpha was not going to retreat and, approaching the enemy, grabbed his arm so that his bones cracked. The man began to struggle and demanded to be released until he fell on his fifth point. It was only when the Alpha threatened him in an openly threatening manner that he dropped his prey and ran for his life, saving his skin. The stranger approached Li Tang, asking if he was all right, and then asked where he lived. The boy then admitted that he had no home. And when the Alpha asked where he was staying, he replied that since yesterday, he no longer had a place to go back to. The young man briefly described his situation to the stranger, and then grabbed the sleeve of his jacket and looked into the man's eyes with a silent plea. As the stranger remained silent, Li Tang dared to ask him, hoping to take him home, but he only silently returned his hand, tearing the cloth away from the boy's fingers. As the stranger continued to be silent, the boy quickly assessed the man, noting that he had a great dress and was of good means. Li Tang, of course, realized that he, being the first person he met, was clearly not needed by this person, and then he caught himself asking himself how much longer he could live in this state and whether he should continue to live like this. In addition, it started to rain, and to the boy's great surprise, the stranger suddenly took off his coat and still silently threw it over his shoulders, after which he offered to go to his house. When the two of them arrived at the Alpha's apartment, Li Tang noted for himself that it was very spacious, and the owner invited the guest to go to the room where he could stay. The stranger told him that he could find a private bathroom, but Li Tang thought only that this was the biggest house he had ever lived in, and the landlord offered him a shower. When he took off the stranger's coat, he noticed that the man's clothes really gave off a very pleasant scent and even caught a hint of bitter grass. Li Tang concluded that the gentleman was probably a smoker, but then decided to take a shower to warm up after being caught in the cold rain. When the boy came out of the bathroom, the landlord offered him a drink, but he immediately decided that it must be some kind of alcohol, but the glass was warm. The man noticed Li Tang's reaction, so he explained that he had just made lavender tea to help him calm his nerves. He decided to drink the entire contents of the glass, assuming that he would probably fall asleep quickly. When the owner of the apartment saw that his guest had drunk the tea, he suggested that he go to his room and rest. Li Tang asked the stranger if he had heard him correctly, and the man asked him if he was not sleepy but he was completely confused. Then, the landlord told the guest to think about resting, and finally added that he should not go upstairs. The next day, the landlord came into his room early in the morning and looked at him with a frown. Although Li Tang did not understand what caused this reaction, and even worried that he had done something wrong. But the man calmly told him that the restroom was very close by, and he could use it, and then offered him a pair of his own clothes and told him that breakfast was ready. When Li Tang saw what the stranger offered him as breakfast, he was speechless. After a couple of minutes, he began to wonder who the man was and whether he had prepared all this food himself. And while he was thinking about it, he heard the gentleman ask if he didn't like the breakfast. Li Tang quickly responded by saying that he liked it very much and realized that he had probably been looking at the table and the landlord too closely. When he began to eat, he was overjoyed with the taste of the food, for he was very fond of such fluffy pancakes and even more so of the sweet, sweet syrup. The landlord offered his guest a cup of coffee, but he did not like the bitterness of the drink. The boy wondered why the man reacted so calmly to this drink while he reacted quite differently, although they were clearly drinking the same drink. As a result, Li Tang decided to have breakfast without coffee because he liked the food better. The landlord noticed that his guest didn't like the drink he offered, so he decided to offer him milk. Li Tang sincerely thanked the stranger and then heard that the man had to go to work and would return around 6 p.m. The guest asked him if he would leave him alone in his house. The man asked the boy if he was afraid to be alone, but the boy said that they did not know each other at all and asked the landlord if he was not afraid of being robbed, for example. And the landlord stunned him by saying that theft is just a hassle and then suggested that he think about what he needs and let him know a little in advance. The man also offered the guest to let him know what he would like to eat closer to dinner and gave him his business card, from which the guy finally learned the name of his benefactor. Toward sunset, Li Tang decided to slowly pack up and leave the house, but he did not know where to go. Since his closest friend had betrayed him the day before, he now had only loneliness and yesterday's chance encounter with the Alpha Man to look forward to. 
Then the guy came to the conclusion that he could not keep himself with illusory hopes in this place and had to decide where to go next and how to organize his life. His heavy thoughts were interrupted by the landlord's question, who calmly asked why he had not called him to discuss the dinner. Yo Jung Hong asked the boy if he had a phone, but was denied. The landlord then assumed that the boy probably just didn't want to eat anything for dinner, but then he noticed that his guest hadn't even entered the kitchen and asked the boy what he had eaten. Without waiting for an answer, the man told the boy that tomorrow a housekeeper would come to the apartment and prepare dinner, and then added that on days when she did not come, he could cook for himself. Lee Tang was very surprised to hear this remark, and then decided to ask the landlord if he could stay in his house tomorrow. Yo Jung Hong asked back if he had a place to go, but he really had nowhere else to go but outside, not to mention the fact that he had been fired from his job the day before without being paid his wages. The boy timidly told the man that he had nowhere to go and was told that in that case he could stay in the house until his situation changed. Before Li Tang could fully understand why this man was treating him so well, the landlord suggested that his guest was very hungry and asked him to wait a while while he finished one thing. The boy tried to understand the real reasons for his benefactor's actions, but did not find any. So he concluded that if he was useless, he would naturally be abandoned and become useless again. So he began to think about how he could be useful to this alpha. Li Tang decided to have a frank conversation with his benefactor, admitting to him that he was an Omega person, and also expressed a desire to be of service to him in some way, to which the landlord explained that he was not such a miserable person to take advantage of someone without conscience, and then added that he was helping him without expecting payment in return. It was still hard for the young man to believe that he didn't have to give anything in return for the kindness shown to him. And then Yo Jung Hong added that he understood the circumstances in which he found himself. But when the benefactor extended his hand to him, the boy assumed that he was angry with him for what he had said and was going to beat him, and he shrank back, for he had not expected to be treated differently. The owner of the apartment asked his guest not to squint and to keep his eyes open, because he was going to put ointment on his bruised spot. Li Tang immediately began to apologize for misunderstanding him and guessed that the man was holding a medicine in the form of an ointment. The first time the man had failed to apply the ointment to the inflamed area, he was reluctant to try again, but finally succeeded. When the boy emphasized that his bruises could heal on their own, the Alpha replied that he should not get used to wounds. At that moment, Li Tang's heart was in his chest because no one had ever treated him like that before. It was hard for him to describe the feelings he had at that moment because he had never felt anything like that before but Li Tang could still clearly realize that he wanted to stay here for a little while longer, and the limit of his dream was at least one week. Even though he was sleeping in a safe place and could finally rest, he was unable to do so because the nightmares of his past tormented him, waking him up in the middle of the night. When he had calmed down a bit and regained consciousness, he went out into the hallway and noticed a streak of light coming from a room on the second floor, but he remembered well what the landlord had said about not going up there. Li Tang was not about to cross the prejudices of the benefactor, so he fell asleep on the first step of the stairs, trying to escape his nightmares. When he woke up, he found the housekeeper, who greeted him kindly with a good morning. This encounter was unexpected for Li Tang, especially since it was the first time he had seen a human being here, and he had no idea how he had managed to fall asleep on the couch. The woman decided to introduce herself and said that her name was Hyun Wu Han, and immediately told the boy that she just wanted to cover him with a blanket, but now she saw that it was not necessary. Finally, Li Tang's mind was clear and he apologized to the maid for distracting her from her work. The woman offered to cook dinner for her master's guest, but the boy modestly refused, not wanting to seem intrusive, but the housekeeper persuaded Li Tang to have a delicious dinner. As he was eating, he noticed a fresh bouquet of flowers and told the maid that he had never seen anything more beautiful than these flowers. But the woman was not confused and replied that he could see something more beautiful if he looked in the mirror. And then she began to talk about these flowers she had brought, telling the boy that these plants have very hard stems, but the most delicate petals, and they give off a very pleasant, delicate scent. Li Tang volunteered to help the woman with her work, but she said she could do it all by herself. The boy assumed that she was afraid that he would spoil something and hastened to tell him about his ability to learn any job quickly. But Hyun Wu Han told him that she was almost done and asked him to get some rest. The housekeeper asked the young man how he was related to her master. Li Tang replied that he was Yo Jung Hong's debtor, after which the woman apologized for her curiosity and admitted that it was the first time she had seen anyone else in the house besides the owner. The boy decided to take the opportunity, when he learned that the woman had been working here for more than five years, to ask what kind of person her boss was. And the housekeeper replied that the man was always very busy, so she rarely met him. The woman said that it was difficult for her to make an objective assessment of the man, but one thing she could say for sure was that her boss was a good man. In the evening, when the landlord returned home, 
His guest addressed him as a gentleman, asking permission to ask him a question, but this was somewhat unexpected. As a result, he asked to be addressed as he pleased, and then learned that the young man had to leave tomorrow for business, which he wanted to ask permission to do. Alpha asked the guest why he was asking him for permission to do such things, but the guest sincerely replied that he was the owner of the house, and he did not want to break any of his rules. The man then emphasized that he was indeed the owner of the apartment, but not the owner of his life, and then handed the boy a key card. He also asked him what time he would be returning home, and the boy replied that he would not be too late. The next day, Lee Tang went to the place where he used to live to collect his few belongings. He was invited to enter the apartment, and his traitorous friend even offered to eat with him, before immediately announcing to his guest that his belongings were packed and at the front door. Li Tang replied that he was fine and his housing issue was resolved, so he would just take his backpack and go on his way. But the guy began to ask where the protagonist was going to go and also began to ask where he was staying. He was mostly interested in the clothes that Li Tang was wearing, emphasizing that he had never seen such expensive things on him before, but the protagonist did not even know their value. Then he heard that he was wearing things that cost more than the rent of this apartment. But then, I'm a guy decided not to impose and suggested that Li Tang call him every time he had an urgent matter, even promising to provide a roof over his head for a couple of nights. Then the protagonist went to his former place of work, where he met Dae Yong's uncle, who immediately began to ask him why he came here and heard that the former employee wanted to see the director. The man responded by telling him that he should leave before the director returned, saying that he still suspected him of stealing and adding that their meeting would not lead to anything good. Li Tang said that he had done nothing of the kind that he was accused of, but his uncle only sympathized with him. Suddenly, the director appeared in front of them and asked the worker what the worm was doing here, calling him names. The protagonist tried to justify himself with another statement that he had not stolen anything. But the director said in response that in any case, the goods were not in the warehouse. The guy told his boss that he knew nothing about it and asked to be paid for the hours he had worked. But the director was in no hurry to do so. On the contrary, he even announced that the damage he had caused to their warehouse was so great that he had never even dreamed of it, and again called him a thief, and said that he would not give him a penny, and then threatened to call the police if he did not get off his property immediately. Dae Young's uncle stood up for Lee Tang, reminding the director that there were cameras in the warehouse, and there was no evidence that it was this guy who made the mistake. The man also asked the protagonist to apologize to his superiors, but he replied that his job was only to drag the goods into the warehouse, which he did. He could not hold back any longer and burst into tears, complaining to the director that if he was accusing him, he should provide solid proof. Li Tang was ready to take only half of the money he had earned, but even Dae Yong's uncle suggested that he leave quietly, saying that he would not be able to work here in peace. As a result, he felt that he had to know the measure at least a little bit, and at that moment, he realized that for these people, he would forever remain a thief, regardless of whether they had evidence of his guilt or not. Li Tang decided not to argue anymore and told them back that he accepted their decision, then turned around and left. With a terrible bitterness in his heart, he came to the conclusion that life was like an arrowhead that always points to the weak, so he realized that this was the way of the world. If we look back at the protagonist's childhood, we can say that he was a very attractive boy, not devoid of natural charm. No one doubted that such a child would be immediately adopted by a good family, but Li Tang repeatedly returned to the orphanage. His first adoption ended with the divorce of his foster parents and his very quick return to the same orphanage. His second adoption was cut short by the sudden death of his foster parents and his sudden return to the orphanage, which broke his heart. As time passed, he became even more attractive. Li Tang always stood in the center of the first row in all the memorable photos of the orphanage, and this taught him to fake smile when he found himself in the arms of unknown volunteers or other strangers. When it turned out that Li Tang belonged to the genus of Omega people, that is, weak loners and unviable outcasts, there was talk of his adoption again. It is important to note that children of the Alpha and Omega race were considered rare, so adoptive parents immediately paid attention to this fact and gave preference to such children. But behind closed doors, the children of the Omega family were treated quite differently, although Li Tang learned to accept this fact and even came to terms with it. The main problem was the son of his new family, who mocked his weakness in every possible way. From the moment this young man, being a beta himself, found out that his foster child was an Omega, he would abuse the boy so much that he would just tremble with fear. This was mostly due to jealousy because beta people were always behind and deprived of special attention. At some point, Li Tang broke down and ran away from home, realizing that he was not welcome anywhere, and his desire to find his own corner remained a pipe dream, and the fact that there was no place on this vast globe that he could call home 
and finally stop running away caused him terrible pain. That is why he continued to run, being rejected, until he reached a cliff at the end of the world. A cliff that he could never reach the bottom of. Now back in Yo Jung Hong's apartment, he wondered if he had the right to return. Li Tang stood in front of the front door until he saw the landlord. The man immediately asked the guest why he didn't go inside, but the boy didn't dare to tell the truth, and then finally admitted that he didn't know if he could. Alpha suggested that the boy go inside and talk about what had happened, but Li Tang noticed that the landlord had come home late that night and said so out loud. The man replied that he had a lot of work to do at work and was just working late, but then he heard the boy ask him a timid question about why he had taken him to his place. Yo Jung Hong replied that the meaning of his action was that he found him hungry and homeless, so he decided to help. Li Tang then explained to his benefactor that he did not go inside because he wanted to get away from here before he received another mental wound, but suddenly heard a question about why he came back here again. The protagonist confessed to the Alpha that there were only two people in his life who shared their clothes with him. One was the one who gave him life, and the other was him. Then the boy added that while the first person eventually left him at the orphanage, the second, on the contrary, picked him up and brought him to his home. Li Tang confessed to the man that he would always remember how he treated him and gave him warm tea and was kind to him for no reason, and then noted that these were the irreplaceable motivations for returning to the home. The boy was still unsure whether he could stay here overnight, so he asked the landlord about it, and when he heard his answer, he cried and asked what would happen if he did not want to leave the house in the end. Yo Jung Hong told the boy that he could stay as long as he liked and wanted, but the boy did not understand how it could be that he got all this for free. Then the Alpha replied to the guest that if he wanted to repay him for his kindness, he should eat well and sleep well, and that he did not need anything else from him. And Li Tang, at that moment, wanted to believe this man's words more than ever. When the next morning came, the protagonist could not find a place to sit, worried that Yo Jung Hong did not go down to the first floor while he always got up early. He even began to worry about whether something bad had happened to him, assuming that he might have suddenly fallen or felt sick. But he couldn't check it out because he was completely locked out of the second floor and couldn't disobey the landlord's instructions. Finally, his torment ended when he heard the Alpha's footsteps and eventually learned that he had just been sleeping for a long time because he was tired during the week. Li Tang now found out that his benefactor allowed himself to sleep longer on weekends and then warned his guests that if he stayed up late in the future, he might wake him up. Alpha saw that the young man was already packed and asked him where he was going and heard that he was looking for a job. The man thought about it and then asked the boy not to rush into this decision and to leave the search for later, but to go to the park together and have something tasty to eat. Yo Jung Hong asked Li Tang if he liked sweets, but he replied that he didn't eat them often enough to be able to answer objectively, but he suggested that he would probably like them. As the two of them sat in the park eating sweet desserts and drinking delicious drinks, Li Tang finally decided that he liked this kind of food. Alpha decided to talk to the boy about the fact that he could relax in his apartment, even though it was not his home, and explained that if he wanted to lie on the couch and watch TV, he could do so. And if he wanted to read or see what was on the second floor, he could go there as well. The man emphasized that his guest could do what he liked and wanted, and the boy was again overwhelmed by this attitude, not knowing how to react to it. When they returned home, the protagonist decided to thank his benefactor in some way and went to the kitchen to cook. Li Tang tried to make a decent dinner, but came to the conclusion that he only spoiled the product. The protagonist hastily decided to redo the dish before the gentleman arrived, but he appeared in the kitchen as if by magic, waiting for dinner. Li Tang had to serve what he had done, so he immediately began to apologize for the spoiled product, but his benefactor only wished him a pleasant appetite. Yo Jung Hong put a piece of meat in his mouth and even admitted that it was quite tasty, but the protagonist did not believe that this was possible. When he suggested that maybe the alpha portion tasted better, he decided to try it himself. But his taste buds were outraged by the terrible taste of the food and rushed to rebel as well. Young Hong asked the alpha not to eat the food, suggesting that he quickly process it into something edible. But the man replied that he really liked the meat in this form and continued to empty his plate. In the afternoon, when they said goodbye, the protagonist went in search of a job which he could not find, because everywhere there was a condition that he was not suitable for a particular position. On the other hand, he was in desperate need of a job and suddenly found an advertisement that said there was a part-time job that did not require age restrictions, special skills, or previous experience. When Li Tang got a job, the manager asked him to sit at the cash register, to which he replied that it did not matter what his job was because he could even work at the cash register. The man began to ask about his current part-time jobs and then suggested that he probably did have experience, which made it easier for him to train a new employee. While the manager was concluding that the newcomer was too weak to do the heavy work, 
A girl who also worked at the place spoke to him and diverted his attention from the boy with a small question. As a result, the man told Li Tang that he had to learn how to prepare drinks and work with the terminal, and then asked Siang He to show all the processes to the newcomer and left. The guy met his partner and mentally asked himself if this place would help him to understand his job duties. When the workday was over and Li Tang was heading home, he reflected on the fact that he had finished much later than he had planned, so he didn't know if Yo Jung Hong was waiting for him for dinner or if he had eaten alone. Just as he was thinking that he should go faster, he heard his benefactor suddenly ask him where he was going in such a hurry. When Li Tang asked Yo Jung Hong what he was doing here, he heard that he was just returning from work. The man offered him a ride home with him, and Li Tang gladly accepted, quickly getting into the car. Yo Jung Hong suggested that Li Tang have dinner somewhere outside his home, and even mentioned that he had a place where he could have a good meal. They decided to leave, and on the way, the Alpha began to ask the boy how his day at work went and if anyone had offended him. Li Tang laughed and asked him if he would go to deal with his offenders, but the man replied that nothing was impossible for him. During dinner, a tense silence prevailed between them and lasted for some time, which made the protagonist very nervous and could not even hold the knife in his hands. Li Tang was the first to break the silence and ask the Alpha if he was angry with him, but the latter clarified why he would be angry. He was concerned that he hadn't said a word since the beginning of the dinner, so he assumed that he had done something to spoil his mood, and he said so directly. And so, Yo Jung Hong told Omega that this was not the case at all, and admitted that he was thinking about tomorrow's breakfast, arguing that he needed to prepare more substantial breakfast because the hamburgers he was going to eat for lunch at work might be bad for him. Li Tang replied that hamburgers actually contain vegetables, cheese, and even meat, but Alpha expressed his opinion that this was undesirable, and advised him not to eat such food at all. The next day, the protagonist asked his partner if she had given anyone gifts, and the girl replied that she had done so many times. When he asked Siang He what she usually gave, she said that it all depends on the person for whom the gift is intended, and then asked the guy for whom he wants to prepare such a surprise. Li Tang then shared with his colleagues that he had a person to whom he was indebted, and therefore wanted to repay him at least in this way, and Siang He asked him what he could tell them about this person. Li Tang said that the person was older than him and Alpha, to which Siang He admitted that she immediately thought of a gift in the form of clothes, a wallet, perfume, or some food. But then the girl excluded Eau de Parfum from the list, remembering that he was an alpha. But Li Tang asked his partner why he shouldn't give an alpha a perfume. Since Siang He thought he was a beta, she assumed that he probably didn't know such subtleties and explained that alphas don't like artificial smells. And the manager added that alphas, like omegas, almost never wear perfume because they have their own pheromones and therefore don't need additional scents. When the protagonist learned that such people do not like to mix scents at all, he finally understood why his benefactor did not wear perfume, and he finally figured out what that pleasant smell was that he had smelled when he first met this alpha. At the end of the day, Li Tang met with Yo Jung Hong again, but when he got into the car, he heard a sharp question about whether there were alphas among his employees. Li Tang asked the benefactor how he knew about this and heard that he had the man's pheromones on him, after which the man hastened to explain that he did not smell these odors at all, and suggested that he walk to avoid causing the driver discomfort. The man explained to the other person that it was not his fault, and then admitted that he was just very sensitive to other people's pheromones. Yo Jung Hong apologized to the boy for his future actions, and asked him to tell him if it would cause discomfort, and then touched him. Li Tang immediately smelled the man's scent, and guessed that it was the same pheromones, and then admitted to the man that, as strange as it may sound, he could only smell him. He even wondered why this was happening, and asked the man about it, and he replied that he was probably a very strong representative of his species as an alpha. Yo Jung Hong asked the boy to listen to him carefully, and warned him that it is actually very easy to leave your pheromones on someone, and then explained that it is not polite at all, and can sometimes even be considered a crime, and suggested hitting the person in response to spreading your pheromones towards him, whoever he is. Li Tang thanked the man for this explanation and also emphasized that he had never acted rashly with him and admitted that it made him feel comfortable. The man decided to ask the boy what he was in such a hurry for, and the boy replied that he wanted to buy him a hamburger. Li Tang only now realized that his benefactor did not eat that kind of food, and then he remembered that the food was probably cold and therefore tasteless. They decided to have dinner outdoors, and after eating, the protagonist wanted to smoke, so he asked the Alpha if he had any cigarettes with him. Now they were both smoking, and Yo Jung Hong told him that he would not be able to pick him up tomorrow because he was going to meet an artist friend of his. Alpha asked the boy if he liked exhibitions, and the boy replied that he had never been to one before. The man then offered to keep him company 
but Li Tang began to assure the benefactor that he did not understand such art at all. But the Alpha replied that it didn't matter because the main question was whether he wanted to go there or not. And as a result, they agreed to visit the exhibition together. The next day, Yo Jung Hong explained to his companion that this artist's style is rough and harsh, despite the fact that the master uses oil paints. Alpha admitted that he had come here only because he knew the artist well, and then suggested that he stay a while and leave before he got bored. Yo Jung Hong confessed to the boy that he would still like to see at least one of the local paintings. Soon one painting really caught Li Tang's attention, and he lingered near it, looking at the winter landscape. He confessed to his benefactor that the painting had resonated with him, and the Alpha invited him to look at it again, trying to understand what it was that interested him so much. Li Tang again admitted that he did not understand painting at all, but he felt that this painting held his attention, and the Alpha suggested that it must have caused some kind of peace in his soul. As a result, the boy learned that the painting depicted a provincial village in northern Sweden and was called Cold North Noon, and then expressed a desire to see this place in reality. And then he changed his mind, believing that reality could be very different from his imagination, so he decided to stick with his imagination. Then the Alpha said that when a person is brave enough to come closer, he can realize how beautiful reality can be, and even more beautiful than he had imagined. And then he reaffirmed that this winter landscape was indeed very attractive. The boy asked the man if he really thought so, and then the Alpha confirmed his words, and then added that if you don't look closely, you might regret not knowing about reality. Li Tang was unable to sleep in his bed again, so he went out into the hallway and dozed off, leaning against the door. When the Alpha came up to him and started asking him what he was doing here and why he was trying to sleep in such strange places like stairs and hallways, the landlord listened to the apology and then said that he did not come to scold him at all and asked him not to say such words while trying to find out the reason and argued that he would not be able to help him if he did not find out the details. Li Tang then asked the Alpha if he would help him if he told him everything and heard an affirmative answer, after which he admitted that he had been having nightmares for a long time and could not sleep well. The man began to ask the boy for other details and then the protagonist told the Alpha that he could fall asleep, but he was afraid to sleep because his dreams felt like a second reality. He also admitted that when he opens his eyes, the first thought that creeps into his mind is that nightmares are overtaking him in reality which causes additional fears, after which he admitted that he behaves like a child. Yo Jung Hong tried to calm the guest down by saying that not only children are afraid of nightmares and admitted that he himself was afraid of them. Li Tang asked his host to stay with him until he fell asleep, and the Alpha agreed to fulfill the boy's request by sitting on the edge of the bed. At one point, Li Tang asked the Alpha if this was how parental care felt, and the man asked him if he was treating him like a father. They then talked about each other's ages, and then the boy found out where his benefactor had studied until he caught himself thinking that he was being a bit of a dick by asking about his life, which he told the Alpha, and then thanked him for his concern. Yo Jung Hong reassured the guest by saying that he was not acting like a brat and asked him not to worry, patting him on the head. The Alpha said that the young man should be more confident and do what he wanted, and then Li Tang fell asleep peacefully. The next day, while they were each at work, the boy told the man that they were having a welcome home party with dinner, so he would come home later. In the evening, his co-workers unceremoniously began to ask the newcomer about the man who picks him up after work in an expensive car. Seong Hee assumed that Li Tang was just a boy from a rich family who worked part-time at the restaurant as a hobby. The girl argued that he wore expensive clothes every day, and the boy admitted that he had actually received them as a gift and had no money. Then his colleagues had even more interesting questions, because in their minds, he was not telling them something, because the overall picture of the fragments they knew about him did not fit together. At this point, he immediately remembered the beta son from his last foster family, who also could not rest until he got under his skin, seeking out any information that interested him. Li Tang tried to stop the manager's verbal outbursts, but he only joked sarcastically, asking him not to be so angry with him. Another colleague suggested that the newcomer just didn't like it when someone pried into his personal life and they continued to laugh at the guy. Seong He decided to change the subject and offered Li Tang a drink, but he said that he didn't know how to drink alcohol. So the men jumped at the chance and rushed to get the newcomer drunk, offering him a light drink to start with. Yo Jung Hong was worried about his guest, so he constantly wrote messages to the boy, which did not escape the curious eyes of his colleagues, who kept asking about this person. When he asked if the man could not show kindness, they all unanimously said that it was impossible. Then the colleagues began to express their own assumptions about the matter, accusing the protagonist of incitement. At one point, they were laughing at the expression on the face of the newcomer, who was both in shock and analyzing what he had heard. Finally, Li Tang asked them not to make fun of him, but they only added fuel to the fire and poison to the glass. Later, the manager asked the boy to forgive him for his words, 
and admitted that he immediately recognized him as an Omega man, and then added that when he drinks, he might say too much. While the guy was experiencing a feeling of deja vu, which was not the most pleasant in his case, the manager continued to mock him. When the evening was over, Li Tang left staggering because he was still dizzy and confused from the meeting. He regretted giving in to the manager and drinking the alcohol he had poured on him, forcing him to drink under various pretexts. As a result, the protagonist was so drunk that he could not control his body and mind, and if it were not for Xiang He, he would have fallen asleep on the spot. He decided that he should go home as soon as possible, but suddenly heard the manager offer to walk him home, saying that he was very drunk. Yo Jung Hong, in turn, could not get through to the guy, not to mention the messages he sent, which he did not answer either. Alpha was both angry and seriously worried about Li Tang. The protagonist was again rescued by Seong He, who approached the guy saying that she was dizzy and had had too much to drink. Li Tang hurried to help the girl, and she said in response that she would not refuse his support, and then asked the manager if someone would walk him home. She made it clear to the man that she and the newcomer were going alone, and they were left, and Li Tang promised Zhang He that he would call her a taxi and take care of her. When the two of them were left alone, having gotten rid of the unnecessary company, it turned out that they were only slightly drunk and had just saved each other. The girl boasted to the newcomer that she was good at pretending to be drunk, and he was pleased that she had volunteered to help him. Li Tang did not know how to thank this lovely creature for her kindness, but the girl replied that she did not expect a thank you and suggested that they go home. As a result, Siang He hurriedly got into her taxi and asked the boy not to worry about her. The new friends said goodbye to each other, and Li Tang once again thanked the girl for her help. When he returned home, he saw his landlord, who told him to go inside, saying that he still had the pheromones of the other alpha on him. Yo Jung Hong emphasized that it is not easy to stick to another person with such odors, and it was stressful for him. Alpha tried to find out what had happened that evening, but then decided not to find out the details and asked the boyfriend to continue to answer his calls, even if it was late. Li Tang stopped the Alpha from trying to get along, only because they lived in the same apartment, and then apologized for not answering and admitted that he had had too much to drink. When the boy realized that the landlord was waiting for him, he was glad to see that someone cared about him to some extent. The Alpha answered Li Tang sharply, and he instantly felt a terrible sense of deja vu and realized that he had gone too far in his hopes, and then began to apologize. Once again, the boy was convinced that he was considered nothing more than an obedient pet, just like this man. But now the Alpha was going to explain what he had to say. When the man saw the boy's reaction, he suggested that they talk about everything that had happened tomorrow morning without hiding anything. Only the next day began with Li Tang suffering from a fever, and no fever medicine helped him, only bringing the high degrees down a bit for a short time. The housekeeper told the owner that it was probably the excessive drinking that was to blame, but noted that the guest's condition was more like a cold and even suggested that he go to the hospital. Yo Jung Hong told the woman that he would take care of everything himself and let her go, thanking her for her help and involvement in his problem, and they said goodbye. 